hey, what's up? It's future me. And I need to have a quick talk with you, like friend to friend. I'm serious. I'm going to be so real with you right now. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know the YouTube thing. So this is probably all wrong, but I want to give you a heads up about what you're about to see because, oh my God, my head is like, it's still spinning. Like I just finished this hunt 10 minutes ago and this is insane. Okay. Long story short, you're going to see my island and you're going to notice that there is a villager there that wasn't there before. His name is Sherb. I did find Sherb in another hunt, not this hunt, another one. I'm editing that hunt currently. I was going to put that hunt out for you. It's like a normal hunt. It's fun. It's funny. It's quirky. It's cute. It's flirty. It's fun. I love it. But it is nothing compared to the hunt that you are about to witness. Tonight, today, whatever time, whatever day it is that I put this video out, this video takes priority. I have to put this out. It's like a moral obligation because what happens to me during this hunt like needs to be seen. It needs to be assessed by science and by the Vatican, possibly. Like, just wait till you see it. Hey everybody, so um, so this is a villager hunt. However, I'm having a current tea moment that I just wanted to show you guys. So I was gonna meet Sherb in the town square. We were gonna eat popsicles together. And he's my new, my new best friend because if you don't know, now you know that Pom Pom is not my friend anymore. Um, we had a falling out. My queen, Sherb, look at him. I could die for him. So he knew, I don't know what he knew. I don't know what insider information he had, but basically I got here and he was sitting next to Pierce, which is, that's Pom Pom's seat next to Pierce because Pierce and Pom Pom do everything together. They're always sitting next to each other. They're always hanging out. You just saw Pom Pom lurking because she was trying to get to her seat to sit next to her boyfriend Pierce to eat her popsicle and Mr. Sherb, Queen Sherb, sat in her seat to make it so the only seat available was my seat next to him. And Pierce is such an idiot that he didn't get up. He's still eating his popsicle sitting in the town square. She was trying to intimidate us to get us up. We're not going anywhere, sweetie. Actually, I am going everywhere. I'm going everywhere today because I'm looking for a new villager. Hi. So, oh God, here he comes. Here he comes. I swear to God, ever since Kyle has been here and you guys have seen this on my TikTok, ever since Kyle joined uh, the family, Goose has been freaking out. He's been trying to reinvent himself. He's wearing like all these crazy things. He's wearing glasses. They don't even have lenses. They're like from Claire's. Anyway, I gotta get up. And by the way, isn't this not sickening? Look at this, oh my God, the code will definitely be in the description. But this outfit is sickening. Look at ugh, Goose. He's going to sit there. Goose is disgusting. Look at him. Don't. Oh, my God. As soon as I get up and Sherb is just like unbothered in between my two enemies. I love him. Get you a best friend who will sit between your two enemies and smirk and eat a popsicle unbothered. Yeah, see, Goose is getting up because he's so uncomfortable. His little messenger bag. Look at him looking at me. Yeah, keep walking. Anyway, this outfit is so sickening. It's a custom coat. I'll have it down in the bio, like I said. I chose it because I thought it would be a beautiful, breezy summer day. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's July 3rd in the game, and it's July, what, 6th in real life? And I haven't, look at this. Oh my God, I love this. I'm relishing in the fact that she's sitting alone. <laughs> And I'm sorry that my T-Rex isn't finished. I have yet to find a spare T-Rex tail. It's a huge problem. Island tour soon, but I need to finish my island. There's Phoebe. She still lives here. There's my girl, Sahara. I've already bought every single thing she brought to my island. I buy her out every single time. I'm probably like keeping this woman afloat. I don't want you to see my nasty flower hybrid area is so out of whack. I want to show you this plot available. That's right. Nook Inc. said what they said. So this plot is available and this plot used to belong to Chevre. Now Chevre was a true queen. Chevre was an unproblematic queen, okay? And I loved every minute that she spent on this island with us and I miss her dearly. However, I was never like truly connected to her and I just like, I always knew that eventually she would move on. She went to go live with Nan. Can you get out of my way? I swear to God, he's still sitting there. I stand Sherb so hard. So she, I think she went to go live with Nan. 
honestly, tea. I have to chop some wood because I'm trying to save up some Nook Miles. I think I have like 20 Nook Miles tickets, maybe, hopefully. And then I have like a bunch of Nook Miles. I really don't wanna have to buy any. But basically, long story short, Chevre left, which was a long time coming. And she was, she was great, but she was unproblematic. And for my island, that's actually a little bit of a problem because eventually you gotta start earning your keep. You have to start producing content for me, sweetie. It's like if you had like the Kardashians and one of them was like super unproblematic, like totally unconfrontational, non-confrontational is actually the word. She, they were just like so productive. They can communicate well. They just don't do anything that sparks any kind of controversy. That wouldn't fly. I think they would put that child up for adoption and they would try again to get a problematic one again. Um, hot take, but you know I'm right. So that's kind of how, how we are here. And I will say like <sighs> there's room for like one unproblematic person. And I think that that person's gonna end up, oh God, gonna end up being um, Bianca, you know, for now at least. Bianca is very neutral. She's just cool, she's collected. I think you know what I'm getting to. What I'm getting to is, oh, he's still there, I love him. Is that I need a girl, I need a new girly. And so finally, I'm out, I'm hitting the road. I'm hitting the road to find my bitch. I'm hitting the road to find my new bestie. You know what's funny is I, I think I'm gonna keep Pom Pom around because I wanna fight with her for the rest of my life. <laughs> because I don't want I don't want tranquility on my island. I want unrest. I gotta go bring some stuff to Blathers and you know what else? Do you guys wanna know what else? I actually have not gone diving yet. Do you wanna do that real quick with me? Just real quick, I won't take long because I have stuff to, can you get out of my way? I swear to God he's stalking me. I gotta go see a fresh face. Oh my God, look at him. He put that outfit together himself. <laughs> I can die. Can you believe him? What are you gonna go rob a bank? Oh my God, he's so cool. I don't know if I've like talked about this before, but I love that his bed is three cardboard boxes and yet he has a literal grand piano and like a probably $10,000 like James Cameron's camera and like all of this expensive equipment. That's my kind of man. He knows where his priorities lie, no pun intended. Anyway, um, we're wasting time for no reason. What could you possibly be pondering? Hey queen, we say, I don't, I'm not talking to you. Um, what debut album? Ow! <laughs> oh my God, I just shaded the fuck out of her. Hell yeah. How do I swim? How do I swim, you guys? How do I jump right in? How do I, ew, ugly. I hope nobody sees. <gasps> I'm actually just like swimming. Oh my God, how do I like dive? <gasps> are we, are we doing this? What is going on? Okay, what do I do? do I, how do I dive? How do I dive? I wanna catch some stuff. How do I catch stuff? How do I catch a thing? How do I catch, it's like a Pokemon battle where it goes da -da 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 -da. How do I catch a jellyfish? How do I catch a, an octopus? What do I do? Why is this happening? What's the point of this? This is a lot of work for a little bit of payoff. What do I do, guys? How do I catch a pearl? I actually don't know what to do. How do I catch a pearl? Dude, this is so trippy and weird. I feel like I'm in like a Lana Del Rey music video. This made a fool of me. Animal Crossing, your newest update, made a fool of me publicly. And I'm not okay with it, and I might sue. Am I an idiot? How, why couldn't I figure that out? I gotta give some stuff to Blathers. I really wanted to give him a jellyfish or an octopus, but it didn't work out that way. Interesting. This is a nightmare. So I'm such an idiot that like, I had to look up how, how to do what I just did in Animal Crossing. Like, how do I catch sea creatures? How do I find pearls and mussels and octopuses and jellyfish? How do I do it? Um, and I guess so, okay. Once you have the wetsuit, you gotta dive. I did all that. You can even jump off the rocks or calmly wade into the water from the beach if you're boring like me. While swimming, you'll eventually come across some bubbles and you can swim over the bubbles and press Y to dive down and you'll come up with a sea creature. Okay. Oh, you have to like catch it. It might start moving away and you gotta press A. Weird. 
Weird. Okay, so I guess we'll do that after this. I hope I got my T-Rex tail. I would die for Blathers. If you don't listen to Blathers facts when you donate something to the museum, you're trash. Get help. Disgusting. Why are they stalking me? I swear to God. Okay, what, should I be cool and jump off the rocks? I guess I have to put my wet wetsuit on first. Wait, hold on. Please, T-Rex tail, please. Come on. <laughs> I'm never gonna have my T-Rex completed. So sad. Okay, so now I have to change into this ugly, hideous wetsuit. And then can I jump off the rocks? What do you mean jump? Because they ma they shamed me for wading in, 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 into the water peacefully and calmly. And I felt shamed. So now I feel like I have to wade into the water. Oh, it's a shark. Obviously got to catch the shark. Hi, little sharky shark. Come on, baby. I got all my sharks at the... Are you kidding me? I didn't even get a chance. Interesting. That's the way this day is going to go. Love it. Put your... Okay. What do I do? Okay, now I can, okay. Okay, I guess I didn't jump off a rock because I'm boring. I don't know. This is not working out for me. Where's the bubbles? Is it just not a, oh, there's some bubbles. Oh, you guys, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. Look, did I catch it? Did I catch it? No, no, girl, go get it, go get it, go get it, go get it. Oh my God, did I catch it? I caught one. I caught a jellyfish, a moon jellyfish. And guess what, you guys? I worked at, um, at an aquarium with um, lots of sea creatures. I actually have a huge background in working with animals and zoology and marine biology. And moon jellies don't actually sting you. They have really small nematocysts, which are the little stinging barbs that go into your skin. And I, um, fun fact, I worked in the jellyfish department for a little while. And I let all of the jellyfish that we had sting me because I was curious and I wanted to like rate all of their stings on a scale because I have like mental issues. I don't know why. I, did. I was just like, I wanted to be like a cool scientist. I want to be like, I'm going to just be brave and let them all sting me. And there was none that were like super deadly, but there were some that like hurt so bad. I don't know why I did this. I also asked the curator of the freshwater department if I could touch the electric eel. We had a huge electric eel and I was like, can I touch that? And he was like, the electric eel? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, um, it's electric. And I was like, yeah, no, I know. I just want to like, that's why I want to touch it. And he's like, it's going to electrocute you. And I was like, yeah, no, I figured. Um, I just wanted to know what it felt like. He was like, to be electrocuted? I was like, yeah, by an electric eel. And so he's like, yeah, like if you just touch it with one finger, you should you should be fine. It's going to electrocute you though, like, like for real. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And I touched it with one finger and it like electrocuted TF out of me. And it was so like uh, painful and not fun at all. But now I can say on my YouTube channel during an Animal Crossing video that I have touched a full grown Amazonian electric eel and got electrocuted by it as a result. Anyway, back to the jellyfish story. Um, I bet these are gonna look really cool in the aquarium. I can't wait to see them. Oh, I found a sea creature. Hey, hi, hello. Um, it's a moon jelly. So anyway, what I was gonna say is I've touched lots of jellyfish that really do sting you. And moon jellies, most of them have really, really small nematocysts and they hardly, hardly sting you. Um, however, I will say I had one in my eye once. That's a whole nother story. So I'll tell it to you because you guys are wondering, I'm sure. So, okay, moon jelly in my eye, check this. I would love some interesting facts. Anyway, moon jelly tentacles in my eye, they did sting my eyeball because this sounds really bad. I'm a vegan, I just wanna let you know because <laughs> I've gone three videos without telling you. So what I was supposed to do, there was a lot of jellies that were bigger and scarier and they ate moon jellies. And so what I would have to do, and listen, hear me out. What I would have to do is take the broken moon jellies that were dead they're already dead, I promise. Like these creatures literally do not have a brain. They don't have nerve endings. However, I still wouldn't just like kill one because I would never kill anything. But um, getting back on track, I would take, every day you would go in there and you'd find broken jellyfish because they're so fragile that sometimes they would just like swim a little too hard and just completely tear themselves and break and rip. 
and they would die. And so every day there would be like broken jellyfish. Um, I would go in every day and I would be like, oh, who's broken today? Look at all my sharks. I love sharks. Sharks are so cool, you guys. Anyway, I have ADD. Did you notice? So I would take all the broken jellies and I would chop them up. They're already broken, I promise. I would never hurt a creature. Um, they're broken. I would chop them up in this little pitcher. So I'd take all the broken jellies, make sure that they're dead, and then start chopping them up with a big knife. It sounds awful. Oh, cool! <gasps> they look so cool! Oh my god, amazing! I thought they were going to go in here with the sea butterflies. But they went in here. Anyway, I would take the moon jellies, and I would put them in a pitcher, and they were, again already broken and torn up and dead. And then I would start chopping them up with a knife like Leatherface. And I would like mix them up and chop them up into this slushy um, little slush thing because I would need to put it into a turkey baster and then um, squirt it into all of the tentacles of like the nettles, which are these big, really painful um, jellyfish. And they eat the moon jellies. Again, very sustainable. So. I'm chopping up moon jellies. Again, they're already dead. They felt no pain. They're in heaven. And they, ooh, we got a lot of stuff in here and it's all trash. Trench coat? What kind of trench coat is this? Who threw away a trench coat? What does this look like? Oh my God, Chevre. I gave that to Chevre before she left. She's a bitch. She's a bitch. She threw that away. I don't like her. I'm just kidding. Anyway. Back to the moon jelly story. You guys are probably dying to know how I got moon jellies in my eye, but you're probably starting to catch on. I got them in the pitcher. I'm chopping them up. They are already dead. I'm going to feed them to some nettles. There's some really big Atlantic sea nettles and Pacific sea nettles. Look them up. They're huge and they hurt so bad to get stung by. They are, their tentacles like stick to your skin and then you have to pull it off and sting your fingers. Why did I do that? It's weird. Anyway, so the nettles, they love to eat other jellies and so I'm chopping up jellies chopping 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 I'm going ham I'm getting in there chopping 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 I want my nettles to eat good tonight mama and then I drop the pitcher and I dropped it straight down okay so I dropped the pitcher it just slipped out of my hands and it dropped straight down and then it splashed all up it, everything in the pitcher went up and into my face and my eyes were open and moon jelly residue including the nematocysts, which are the little stinging barbs on their tentacles, went into my eyeballs, and that stung. <laughs> and I can tell you that I got stung in my eyeball by these little moon jellies, I can swear to God. And I can't even imagine what my eyes would have done if it had been like an actual stinging jelly, like something with really venomous nematocysts, like a nettle. Like I can't even imagine. I would have probably had to pull my eyeballs out of the sockets and wash them and then put them back in. Um, but I did have to use the little eye wash station. You know those little eye wash stations? Have you guys ever had to use one of those? I needed to wash jellyfishes out of my eyeballs, you guys. That happened to me in real life. Um, I have a lot of really crazy animal stories. Like, I've done some crazy... It's like, it's not... It, it sounds made up. It really does. You Like, when I was in my first video, I was telling you guys about how I found an anaconda in the, in the rainforest. And um, while I was there on my way to this swamp during the night we were like i'm about to tell you another crazy animal story that you may or may not believe but i swear on my life it's true i couldn't make this up if i tried i'm not well i am a very creative person actually i was gonna say i'm not that creative but i i kind of am but i'm, I'm not making it up you can either believe me or you don't have to but you can ask anybody who was there with me in the amazon that this happened to me wait till you guys hear this story it's actually really good Okay, so going to the swamp, it's called the floating forest because there's these like huge swaths of floating grass with palm trees and the roots of the palm trees are literally floating. I'm not kidding. It is a floating forest and it's amazing habitat for anacondas and it's in Peru and I was going with a bunch of amazing people and we were going to look for anacondas and so... I'm in the Amazon rainforest for the first time in my life and I'm like loving it. And I'm like, this is amazing. Like, I love this. I'm not scared of anything. I, I love animals of all kinds. I love spiders. I love snakes, obviously. I love jellyfish clearly enough to let them sting me. 
I've always been like that person that I'm like, I want to know what it's like, but I don't ever, ever, ever want to get stung or bitten by something that's like medically significant. Like I've worked with tons of venomous snakes and I love them, but I would never let one bite me and I would never want to get bit by one. I'm always super careful when I work, work with them. And the same goes for anything else that would be medically significant. And so one of the things that I was like a little bit like, hmm, huh, I don't want that to happen to me when I went to the Amazon was bullet ants. Um, there are bullet ants in the Amazon and they're, they're, uh, they're a pretty common sight. They're these huge ants, if you haven't heard of them. They have the most painful sting of any insect. And um, it basically is called the bullet ant because it feels like you got shot, but it feels like that for like 24 hours. You're just like in agony and there's nothing that anyone can do for you for 24 hours. And that's not something that I wanna go through at any point ever. Like, I don't know how there's people who let bullet ants sting them because they wanna know what it's like. I'm not at that extreme level. Yeah, I'll let some jellyfish sting me. I'll get a rash for a few days. It'll be a little whoop, boop. I'll let like an electric eel just kind of whoop real quick. I was even, I was kind of, to be honest, I was kind of like, when I got there, I was like, I kind of want to get bit by a piranha, just like real quick. Cause piranhas, it's, it's a misconception that they're just gonna eat you if they taste blood. They're gonna eat you and skeletonize you if they're starving. Um, but they're not just gonna eat you. Like they might bite you real quick but they're actually really shy. I would love to have a tank of piranhas. I think they're adorable and I love them. And I kind of wanted to get like bit by one real quick so I could have like a cool scar and I could tell people that I got bit by a piranha. Wouldn't that be cool? I love that, I think that's cool. Um, but it didn't happen. What happened instead is that a bullet ant fell on my head, you guys. A bullet ant fell onto my head. I swear on my life, I'm swearing on my life. People tell this story because they were there and they saw it. Like they tell the story to their friends, like this girl that I was with had a bullet ant fall on her head. I'm the girl. So I'm in the Amazon rainforest. It already sounds made up, but it's not. I'm in the back of this little rickshaw thing. It's like a little bumpy, little mini car. I'm in the back of it with all my buddies. We're coming back from the floating forest. We were just in the forest at night. There was big spiders. There was like caiman. And um, how many Nook Miles tickets do I have? I have 10, 20, 30, I have 43 to start. So maybe I don't have to buy them. Um, I will pick up on the story in a minute, but I just wanna let you guys know that I'm going out to hunt a girl. And I think I really, really want the girl to be Anka. Clearly, obviously I need to bring my bitch home. So we're gonna go look for Anka and I'm gonna tell you uh, the story of how a bullet ant fell on my head. Hi, Wilbur. Uh, how, do you, how do you think you can help me out today, big boy? So we're in the back of the rickshaw. We're coming back from the floating forest. And on the way to the floating forest, while we were driving there, there was one of the guides that we were with. We kind of hit this like swath of branches and then they had to stop the rickshaw because something got on her. And this was like the moment that I realized like, damn, we are really out here in the Amazon rainforest because she jumped out of the rickshaw and she had this humongous venomous caterpillar on her shirt. This thing was a Dr. Seuss creation, you guys. It was this big, huge, fluffy, colorful caterpillar. And she was scared. And she like had to be very still. And they had to get this thing off her with like a stick. And it was scary. And she was like, oh my God, thank God that thing didn't sting me. It would have, it would have been awful. And I, that was the moment for me that I was kind of like, damn, like we are really out here. Like I hope a venomous caterpillar doesn't fall on me. I didn't get a venomous caterpillar. I got something a little bit better. So on the way back from the floating forest, we're all tired. It was like midnight um, and we're bumping back through the rainforest. And we hit this like, we hit this swath of trees again and the trees shake. And I guess every time that happens, it's not good. Like you have the potential. You have like an you have like a pretty good chance that something venomous and dangerous is going to fall on you basically in the Amazon. Okay, who's this? 
Is it something venomous and dangerous? Let's see. Who is it? <gasps> it's Dobie! Again! Dobie's the first one! That's interesting. Hi, Dobie. Dobie, do you want to hear about the time a bullet ant fell on my head? What is Dobie wearing? Ladies and gentlemen, Dobie is wearing something different. He's wearing like a weird hat. And I love it. This is interesting. This is already so interesting. He's heard of me. I'm the girl that had the bullet ant fall on her head. <laughs> Dobie's adorable. He's got his rain jacket on. I probably should have dressed for the rain. God, girl, you look like you're going to Coachella. What are you doing? Look at Dobie. He really looks adorable in his little rain jacket and his weird hat. He looks so cute. Dobie, thank you. This is going to be a good hunt. This is gonna be a really good hunt, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, the bullet ant. <laughs> so, so we're bumping back, we hit the swath of trees, it shakes, stuff falls, little twigs and stuff here and there. I'm just like, whatever. I got a bandana on, I do have a bandana on. Um, and I'm just sitting there and one of the guides behind me, the same one that had the venomous caterpillar on her, shout out to Holly, um, she goes, Amanda, can you turn your head a little bit? And the way that she said that, instantly I knew I'm probably in a life or death situation because she said it with like her voice was kind of shaky. Like she said it like there was something on my head. So I turned my head a little and then she goes, Paul, Paul. And Paul's like, um, he's amazing. His name's Paul Rosalie and he's like, the guy that we were out there following. He's like this amazing naturalist and conservationist and adventurer extraordinaire. And so she's like, Paul, Paul. And then Paul looks, oh my God, Paul, this amazing, fearless explorer. He takes one look at me and he goes, stop the car, stop the car. And he starts yelling. And so I'm like, I'm, this is it. This is how it ends. This is how it ends. At least I died doing what I love. And he's like, don't move. And I'm like, oh my God. And this whole time, everybody's freaking out. People around me, people who are sitting next to me, they take one look at me and they jump out of the side of the car to get away from me. I'm not kidding. So at that point, I'm like, there is something on top of my head that is so bad and I'm gonna die. I'm most likely going to die here and now. This is great. So everybody's jumping out of the car and trying to get away from me. And Paul is like trying to assess the situation, like how do we do this safely? And I'm, meanwhile, let me remind you, I'm sitting here paralyzed in fear, completely still. I haven't said a word. And I have no idea what's on top of my head. So my mind's racing. I'm like, is it a venomous baby snake? Is it the caterpillar from, from earlier? Like I have no idea what it could possibly, I'm like, is it something that I don't even know what it is? And it's like this, insane like super oh it's renee hi renee i'm not interested in renee so i am not at all aware of what could possibly be on top of my head i'm 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 trying to come to terms with the fact that this is this is it this is where i die and paul is like okay i'm gonna do this and he like swats my head and then once he does that Everybody cheers and they all start patting me on the back and they're like, yay! And, I'm like, and I just started like kind of crying a little bit. I was like, cause I still, I had no idea what I just survived, but I knew that I survived it. So I was like, I just kind of started like crying a little, I think. And then Paul goes, that was the biggest bullet ant I've ever seen. And I was like on my head, sick, sick. <laughs> So that happened. I really did have a bullet down on my head. And now I feel more grateful for every single breath. <laughs> I don't even know what would have happened if it had stung me on my head, on my head. Would it have been able to get into your bloodstream? I have no idea. This isn't something I really wanna, wanna um, assess during an Animal Crossing villager hunt. Oh my God, weird, interesting. Do you guys, rem is this the same video? I'm having flashbacks. Uh, this is Wolfgang, again. Should I just like invite Wolfgang, spice things up a little? Wolfgang, what's up? It's been a while. Been a while. Wasn't expecting to run into you either. My friend, my friend Wolfgang. 
Look at Wolfgang. Still wearing the Leon Kennedy jacket, still sending me. I gotta get out of here as soon as possible. I must leave at once. He's cute, you guys. He's no Kyle, but he's cute. I will, I will admit. Bell bottom heavy metal. This is stovetop camera case. Tag yourself. I'm definitely bell bottom heavy metal. Are you stovetop camera case or require assistance? I'm actually tagging myself as ready to go home because that was Wolfgang again. Two wolves though. Who is she? Who on earth? Okay, wait. At first I thought I hated him. At first I thought I was gonna roast him, but I think he's adorable. Who are you? Dina! The whole time she was Dina. Dina's cute. I kind of love Dina. Oh my God, she's adorable. So you know that like that TikTok song that's like, I was just a girl in the village doing all right. And then I became a princess overnight. So that's from like Sophia the First, which is a Disney show or movie. Is that? I don't know what it is. Um, I looked it up because I was curious. She piqued my interest. Anyway, how did she do it? Does anybody know? I don't know. I just really don't want to go to work tomorrow. I shouldn't complain. I have a wonderful job. I just don't want to wake up. <laughs> that's that's honestly it. I like the theory of waking up early. I love the theory of waking up early. It's a very romantic idea in my mind. I'm like, I'm going to wake up early. I'm going to wake up so early. But then when it's early, I'm like, I, I've been murdered. Oh my God. I feel like I see him every four hours of my life. Like if we, if we like um, totaled up the amount that I see, is this Rex? Is that Rex? Is that his name? Is this, is it Rex? That's Rex, right? And the more I see him, the more I want to punch him in the face. I'm not going to lie. At first, do you remember? I think I remember that the first time I saw this man, I walked up to him. I was initially rolling my eyes and then I gave him a chance. I was like, you know what? I actually, I don't mind Rex. But the more I look at him, the more I want to physically harm him. And I think that honestly, it's best for Rex that I don't see him again. It's not even best for me. It's, I think in order to keep Rex safe, we need to make sure that this never happens again. Who is that? Oh my God, that's Flip. Is that not Flip or Simon? It's either Flip or Simon. It's Simon. I can assure you that that's Simon because Flip has the crazy eyes. This is Simon and I'm done with Simon. I don't know if you saw Simon in all of the montages that I did in the Kyle hunt, but I don't want to talk to Simon. His catchphrase is Zook with like several Z's. Interesting. Where's the girls? Where's the ladies? Where's the ladies? I need the ladies. I need the bad bitches. Oh my God. You know what? Karma's here. Karma's back. Karma is here to, to get me because I... I turned my back on so many bad bitches. I chose Kyle over the bad bitches. And honestly, I don't regret it because I am so happy with Kyle. Every day he finds a new way to make me smile. And I'm not even kidding. He has never once made me feel weird. He has never once made put me in a situation where I was like, ooh, weird, Kyle, a little bit problematic, dude. We've never gotten in a fight. Like he empowers me he acknowledges me he like makes me feel seen he listens to me he like asks me questions about who i am and my heart and my soul kyle is honestly honest to god it's it truly is a happy ending folks nicholas sparks himself could not write a better love story so i don't regret it for a second i don't regret leaving anka i don't regret leaving cherry multiple times. I don't regret leaving Audie or Blanche. But I feel weird about it at the same time. I don't know. It what is this? Hold on. Hold Hold on. Okay. What is going on? Is this Am I here? Oh my god. Oh my god wait you guys i feel like somebody's watching me right now i feel like the government's watching me i'm actually serious i'm kind of freaking out i'm like looking around to make sure that there's no cameras and stuff what is going on did you guys 
Listen, hold on. Oh my god. Okay, this just became a horror channel. This just became a spooky, scary channel. This just became like a scary thing. This is really scary. I'm not even kidding how shook I am right now. Okay, let's assess the situation. So, this is not staged. I can assure you that I am literally covered in chills. Every ha hair on my body is standing up right now. Get away from me, get away from me, you cursed being. I actually can't be on the same uh, plot of land as this creature. Okay, if you're confused right now, let me go over something with you. If you're not confused, if you know what I'm talking about, you're probably quaking like I am. I'm trembling right now. On the last island, it was Simon, right? And I looked at Simon and I said, either that's Simon or Flip. And I said, you know, they both look the same. And then I saw his face and I was like, no, that's Simon. Flip has the crazy eyes. But I brought up only two monkeys on that island. And there are many, many, many monkeys. And not only are there so many monkeys, but there's so many villagers. So the fact that this is Flip directly after Simon is incredibly concerning to me to the point where I'm, I am terrified. I mean, I don't know where to turn. This is Flip, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, Am I here for survival training? I don't know, Flip. I'm, I am trying to survive this ordeal. This is my new story. So it's the bullet ant on my head, the jellyfish in my eyeballs, and Flip the monkey appearing right after Simon because I basically manifested him inadvertently. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I am a, I'm not a like a spiritual religious person at all, but I'm praying. I'm praying hard. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I need to contact the Vatican about this. What do I do? What do I do at this at this point? Like you guys just saw something happen that was that's unexplainable. You guys just saw an unsolved mystery occur, like a real scary scary event. This is a haunted video. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little bit more scared than I should be, but I actually am playing this in succession and you guys saw it. There's no way that I can doctor this footage. And that happened. Why did that happen? Am I psychic? Am I a little bit psychic, perhaps? Do I have untapped potential? Do I have untapped clairvoyance? What is this? What's going on? Raven, can you help me? Raven, please help me to channel my powers. Please. Oh my God. If you can gaze into the future. <laughs> Let's do Anka. How about Anka? So now I'm thinking about Anka. You guys remember Anka? Let's talk about Anka. Anka is the pharaoh of an Egyptian community. She is a beautiful girl. She, um, yeah, I'm talking about Anka. You know, just thinking about Anka randomly. <laughs> no, no reason why. God. It's the future I can see. It's so mysterious to me, yeah. Yep, that's me. I love Raven Simone. Where is she? I hope that she is sitting on those Disney Channel dollars living her best life. She was in the Cheetah Girls. Oh my God, I've been feeling the Cheetah Girls lately. I'm not gonna lie. I was listening to the Cheetah Girls the other day in my car. As a 27 year old adult, I was driving through town bumping cheetah girls cheetah sisters okay so i guess i don't have esp it's fine rooney what's up can you know what rooney is cute actually rooney is cute i think i sold rooney a little short i'm not a fan of the kangaroos as you know but he's kind of cute i mean i got a boyfriend but he's cute he's got like a side bang it covers the ears he's also got gloves on he looks like like an mma fighter you know what i mean i love a bad boy let me tell you and i love like a fighter my husband in real life is a black belt and when i found that out Ooh. because he was already perfect he was like he was like this metal guy he was the guitarist he's basically kyle like in real life except for without the cardboard bed when I found out that man made his bed every morning because he got OCD, he had undiagnosed OCD until this year. My God. No, I'm not making any light of his OCD. It's been, you know. But anyway, 
He makes his bed every morning. Gotta love it. I was simping from the beginning, but when he when I found out that man was a black belt, are you kidding me? And so I love a man that looks like he does some martial arts, honey. And Rooney looks like that man. I don't know if Kyle could handle martial arts. I don't know. You know what? He seems like a jujitsu guy. I can see him rolling. But um, but I also see Rooney, and I recognize that Rooney might just be an MMA fighter. And something about it, I tell you what. Ooh, I gotta roll up my sleeves. I literally put my controller down so I can roll up my sleeves because I'm getting hot, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I'm out here talking about the cheetah girls, trying to be wholesome. And then Rooney comes on the scene with his, wait, what is, what is going on? Oh, I accidentally told him to tell me more about the islands. He was like saying dialogue I didn't recognize. And I was like, is here, am I being arrested? What is going, am I in trouble? What is this? That was nerve wracking. Um, anyway. I want to talk more about the Cheetah Girls. I don't know. I just love them. I think that that was like a great movie. And that brings me back to my original point of everything is that Raven is the best. And I wish her nothing but the best. But I love all the other Cheetah Girls too. They were all amazing. And their songs were such bops. Ew, Rocco. Come on. This isn't what I signed up for. Where are the baddies? Where are the queens? I'm ready to get a queen, Wilbur. Aren't you? Who's your queen, Wilbur? I'm ready to get a girl. I need a girl. I need a sickening goddess B-I-T-C-H in my life right now. I need Anka. I need Anka. Okay, so let's talk about the girls that we want, right? Anka. Oh. I miss Anka. Every day of my life I miss her. I don't think I felt I don't think I felt the happiness that I felt in that moment with Anka on that island when we were having our best friend photo shoot. I don't know if I have felt that since. Even with Kyle. Kyle has given me some of my highest highs of my life. But I don't know if I could feel quite as sublime as I felt with Anka in that moment that we did our best friend photo shoot. You guys remember, you were there. And uh, and so I really, really want Anka, but I keep thinking about Marina too. I just can't get Marina out of my head. She's stuck there because the suction cups on her tentacles, on her arms, because they're actually called arms on an octopus. It's weird, it's a weird thing. I'm being scientific again, I need to stop. You can call them tentacles if you want, absolutely. Um, but technically it's like squids have tentacles. So arms are like more, arms are like you can really control them and like do things with them. That's an octopus, whereas like a squid, they can't like move their tentacles that much. Same with a jellyfish and a nautilus, for example, has tentacles. Um, and then a cuttlefish, beautiful, adorable cuttlefish. You guys know about them, I'm sure. Um, they have arms as well. I need to stop. This is not the Discovery Channel. This is a mountain that I need to climb. Climb every mountain. <gasps> ah! Oh my God! <gasps> Was I just not? You guys, I'm freaking out. I'm worrying the dogs. Oh my God. Okay, I'm looking at my phone right now because I threw my controller across the room. What is going on? Oh my God. I'm like actually crying. I feel like, okay, this is the government for sure. Like this is a, cons this is haunted game. This is not normal at all. This is 100% supernatural. I know, see, the dogs are upset. Hey, it's okay, it's okay. The government is on to us. It's Area 51 for sure. They might be closing in on us. The aliens are coming, but it's fine because I got Marina. Oh my God. You guys, you saw this. I did not stop it from start to finish. This has been a haunted tape. This is a haunted, this is a cursed and haunted villager hunt and I love every minute of it and Marina's coming home with me. This is... Oh my God, I got Marina! Okay, so I love Anka. You guys know I love Anka and I miss her so much. 
But I was literally just talking about Marina. Was I not? The curse is, is dead and gone. Yeah, the dogs are upset. It's okay. It's okay. The curse is broken, sweetie. We're good. I just got Marina. Oh my God. This all happened so fast. This all has happened so fast. Oh my God. I can't believe, I threw my controller across the room because you guys saw this, right? Am I, am I going crazy? Am I awake? Am I awake? <laughs> oh my God. You'll love it there. Oh my God. I was literally just about to talk about Marina. Uh, I'm like, I'm touching my head and I'm squeezing my temples because I'm trying to figure out how that happened. You could gaze into the future. <laughs> oh my God. Marina, I just met a girl named Marina. And suddenly that name will never be the same to me. Marina, I just invited a girl named Marina. And suddenly I found how wonderful a sound can be. Marina. I need to stop. Marina, I'll never stop saying Marina. Oh my God. You guys, did that happen? I am totally sober, by the way. By the way, in case anybody was wondering, 100% sober. I could not be more sober, actually. I could not be more awake and alive in this moment. And I, this happened so fast. How many tickets did I use? Did I invite her? Did I actually invite her? I invited her, right? Like, I feel like I blacked out. I think I blacked out. This has got to be the most chaotic villager hunt of all time. <laughs> Did you guys see this? What happened? I predicted stuff. I think I might be like, I think I might be magic, right? Am I actually a psychic? Raven, hit me up, girl. I'm actually completely a total skeptic of all of that, but I can't explain what happened to me tonight. I can't explain what occurred on this night. What I did tonight is unexplainable. It's unexplainable, okay? Believe it. Ripley's believe it or not, call them. Have them assess this footage. This is cryptozoology. Like this is something that cannot be explained. Y'all, I went out there. How many tickets did I use? I had, I, oh my God, I used exactly 10? Did I, didn't I have 43 tickets? I'll have to, I'll have to check that out. I don't even remember. My head is spinning currently. <gasps> Baby, guess what? I'm psychic, honey. Sweetie, I'm gonna play the lottery. We're gonna be millionaires. <laughs> He's so cute. I don't ever let it rain on my parade. Oh my God, I love him. <gasps> He's always complimenting me. My girl Kaylee from Canton. My girl Kaylee, shout out to Kaylee. I of course will be leaving her whole ass creator code down in the description below. I'm spinning. My head is spinning. I'm upside down. I'm, what is this? What is this? What is going on? What is this? I have no idea what's going on. I thought I like left something in the walkway. Is that a stick bug? And I missed it? Oh my God, you guys, this is topsy turvy. I have no, I haven't seen one of those yet. That was really weird to me. That was a stick insect or something, or like a leaf. What was that? Of uh, some kind of phasmid bug of some sort. What we just witnessed cannot be explained by science. So you guys saw it. I went and I saw Simon. It started with Simon. You remember, I saw Simon and I mentioned Flip. Out of all people, I was like, oh, I always get them two mixed up. Flip and Simon. And I think that this is Simon because Flip's got the crazy eyes. Next island we go to. You guys saw it occur with your own eyes, with the naked eye. The next island, Flip, was lurking. He was there. And then we went to another island. I don't even remember who's there. Rex, I think, maybe. Rex, and then it was um, somebody else after Rex. I don't even remember because my head is spinning. And while I was uh, 
talking about stuff that doesn't even matter. I started talking about the girls that I wanted to see. And so we talk about Anka. Anka's amazing, she's beautiful, she's the morning sun, she's the evening star, I love her. Then the next girl that I bring up is Marina, and I start really talking about Marina, I start talking about her tentacles. I'm talking about cephalopods. I'm knee deep in cephalopodia vernacular. I have a sneaking suspicion that Zucker has something to do with this event that occurred tonight. Because I'm climbing this mountain in the mist of talking about Marina, having absolutely no expectations whatsoever for what is gonna be on that mountain. And lo and behold, none other than Marina herself. She apparates, is that even a word? It apparate, like an apparition? She apparated in front of me. I conjured her with my magic powers because I have magic powers and I'm gonna be trying my best to channel them into something good. I'm gonna try my best to channel them into real change for society. But Marina is gonna join us. Let's go get Marina. I'm gonna go, uh, gonna go to the next day and we'll see you then. Okay, this has been weird. I gotta go like wash myself in holy water. Isabel, what's up? Tell me the truth. Marina, she's gonna be here. I can't believe it. I'm gonna have a great fun day. Thank you, Isabel. Where does Isabel live? Like, honestly, where does she live? I, I think about that all the time, constantly. Like, I wish that they had like a house or something on the island. Wouldn't that be awesome? Like, where does she go after work? After work concludes. I probably have like $3 from the Nook Twins. What? $3, interesting, okay. I need to see Marina, I don't care. She lives on the block. Oh my God, look at her little house next to none other than Bianca. She's perfect. She's gonna live next to Bianca and the two of them are gonna be unproblematic and beautiful forever. Marina! I'm so glad we met on that island and that I'm all moved in here now. I've still got lots of unpacking to do, but I'm really looking forward to spending time here together. Girl, absolutely same, hard same. And I really wanna know what your house looks like because this is so far very interesting. It's very Blade Runner almost. I'm intrigued. I'm a little horrified, but I'm mostly intrigued. <gasps> Marina, look at you. Look what you've done with the place. Oh my God, look at this little couch. <gasps> Marina, you got your bathroom just out in the open. You are bold. You're crazy, Marina. I, I do need you, I need you. I do, yes, I love reading actually. It's a huge passion of mine. Oh my God, this is my bitch right here. Finally, I got my bitch. Once Anka gets here, it's over. And when I tell you it's over, like I truly mean that with all my heart, like it's over. We're probably gonna burn the town to the ground and start anew. I just love her. <gasps> Look at her, she's trying to hear I love that. I love a good long book and some buttermilk. Ew, what about almond milk? I'll get you some almond milk, you could try that. I bet you'd like that. Buttermilk, that's nasty. There's nothing nastier than milk, and I live by that. Look at this girl. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now come on now. It is truly a beautiful day in the town square. I mean, we have this gorgeous angel from, from another plane of existence. She's out here watering the flowers, singing, and then we have, of course, some of my favorite people who are exercising and keeping themselves healthy. And then we have even, even this guy over here who has truly seen us through some of our darkest times. Uh, Mr. Kex, he has got to be feeling good about what he's seeing today because I know that he comes to this town sometimes and he probably feels really uncomfortable because he has seen some, some explosive events take place in this very same town square that is now the picture of bliss. And so look at him, See, it's just, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood and it's all because of her. She has come here and she has blessed us with whatever ethereal 
spice that she has brought and uh, and we're all better for it. I love this. I'm in a good place right now, everyone. Even though this, uh, this solace has been brought upon us in nefarious, possibly supernatural, maybe even demonic um, circumstances, I choose to see it as a blessing, especially looking at her, looking at the weather. I mean, it was like, it was, it was the most awful weather. It was raining, it was blustery, and now it is just nothing but clear skies. And I see that as a sign from Mother Earth herself, that things are starting to really fall into place around here. Hopefully soon we will start to see more, uh, more Anka around these parts, maybe more Marshall, maybe some bow action, possibly some Eric Spice. We also really need Blanche to come home, and so I'm hoping to do all of that soon. I've got lots of stuff in the works for you guys, including an island tour once I get my shit together. And then of course, this gorgeous summer sunflower moment that I'm currently sporting will definitely be in the description in the form of a design code for you. And, uh, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching as always and for your amazing comments. I mean, I have no words to describe how happy you guys make me and how, I don't even, ugh, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not doing this right now. Um, anyway, yeah, if you don't hate me, you can subscribe if you want or whatever. I don't know, I don't know how to do this yet. Uh, I will see you next time. Thank you so much. I'm not gonna stop, that's who I am. I give it all I got, that is my plan. When I find out I lost you, no, you can't bet on it, bet on it, bet on it, bet on it. I wanna make it right, that is the way to turn my life around today.